But Jeff, let's kick it off with you. I mean, you too expect some kind of correction to happen well, in golf. I think after such a runoff, you know, it would be uh, very typical to see a sell-off and a correction. I think the important thing to keep your eye on, though, is the long term. And long term, I'm very bullish. That prices are going to continue moving higher, at least for a few years, and to significant new highs over How and over again. How significant? I'm always curious when you guys say we're going to go higher. Are you saying like 2,000, 3,000? What do you I think? I think before it's over, we'll be at a multiple of today's price, whether that's 4,000 or higher. Remains to be seen. It depends a lot on what happens in politics, economics, and all, all sorts of things. Uh, but I feel fairly confident that we're going to move really higher here. The important thing is that this advance in gold has been based on uh, broad demand from a lot of different categories. It hasn't just been uh, speculators on futures exchanges. Mm -hmm. We've had big purchases this year by central banks. Those are likely to continue. And what's really important about central banks is that gold is now off the market. When speculators or even investors buy gold, often they'll sell it a few months or a year later. These central banks are there for decades, most likely. Um, we've got strong demand from China, India, retail investors in Europe and the United States. All are buying gold. I wonder why they are doing that, Jeff. You know, uh, Ron Paul famously asked Ben Bernanke if gold was money, and of course Bernanke said, no, it isn't. We only hold it for traditional reasons. So why do central banks go in and buy the precious metal if it can't be used as cash? Well, uh, to a central bank, gold is money. It's an official reserve asset. It's been used uh, long before there were dollars as a, a central bank asset. And I think uh, with the outlook for the dollar being uh, uncertain, uh, with the U.S. debt being downgraded, uh, with the euro under pressure, um, people in central banks, central bank reserve managers, are looking for some alternative. And to the extent that they can slowly diversify their reserves into gold, they will do so. And I think we'll see more and more of that. It's one of the factors that limits the downside risk here. Central banks are going to buy on those dips. I'm fairly certain of it. That's what they've done in the past. They'll continue doing it. Also, we've had the Chinese remarkably buying gold uh, regardless of the price. In fact, the higher prices just uh, attracted more buyers rather than discouraged them. And this, too, is long-term holdings that will not come back to the market anytime soon. Uh, it, Go ahead. It's, it's Jonathan Golub. Just a, a, a quick question. If you buy a stock, you have a claim on cash flows, on their earnings, on their dividends. How do you come up with a fair valuation, whether it's gold or silver or platinum? You know, how do you figure out what fair value is other than just simply saying it's going higher, there's more demand for the asset? Well, you know, I, I'd be skeptical of uh, mining shares at this point simply because uh, many investors are buying gold as a, a safe haven for uh, risk avoidance. And when you buy mining shares, you're taking on a whole set of additional risks that are not present in physical gold. So what we're telling clients is that 5 to 10 or even 15 percent of their investable assets ought to be in a core position of gold, physical bullion in coin form or small bar form. And then if you want, you know, you can start speculating or trading in gold mining shares. But there's a big difference between a mining share and an ounce of gold. Jeff, we've got to run, but uh, thank you so much, as always.